Hey folks, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking to Tom Gaylord, the godfather of air guns himself. I had an opportunity to catch up with Tom on a visit to Air Force Air Guns down in Texas. It was great to see him, always a pleasure. And we wanted to sit down and capture some of his thoughts, uh, get the opportunity to get a little back and forth banter going. So we did that and it's gonna be a six part series. Today, part one, we're talking advice and tips for the new air gunner. Hopefully you guys can glean something from it. If you do, give us a like. If you don't, let us know what we missed in the comments down below. And as always, we appreciate it a ton if you subscribe. Let's get to the video. Well, there's two kinds of new air gunners. There's some that are new to shooting. And those guys got to start a little further back than the other kind, which are guys that are coming over from firearms. Sure. They're coming over because ammo is short or ammo is expensive either way. And when they looked into air guns, they found, oh my gosh, things have changed. These air guns are, are quite different. So what tips do I have? For them, I say, don't get that best gun that you want for the first gun, because you don't know what you don't know. That's a fair point. I always go by the, like, buy the best you can afford mentality, you know? I agree with that when yeah. you know what you know. But if these guys, uh, they think they're gonna get one inch 10 shot groups at 100 yards and they start going on the forums and these guys will jolly them up. Uh, I think they ought to learn something about the guns. However, comma, those guys are probably going to stay in the pre-charged pneumatic field. Sure. Because they want accurate guns. So they've already eliminated two power plants, CO2 and spring piston. Right. And so it's a, it's a little quicker for them if they will spend the time to get the features they really, really want. Some of them read about air gun silencers and they think, oh boy, well, air gun silencers relate to the power of the air gun. Mm -hmm. And you can't silence a 60, 70 pound air gun like you can one that's doing 20, 30 pounds. Sure, pounds. absolutely. So I would look at that. Um, and th those guys are shooters already, so they know about breathing and trigger control. They probably don't know about follow through because their firearm bullets are so much faster than pellets, and that's another thing they need to learn. So with PCPs though, they're jumping over that, right? Like, like the lock time considerations you have with the spring piston or gas piston gun are completely different than with a PCP. They are, yeah. but they have to remember that the pellet still takes time to get out of the PCP barrel, sure. where they might be putting out a pellet at 900 to uh, 1100 feet per second with an accurate PCP. They're used to 3000 feet per second with their AR-15. Right. And there's a big difference. They can make a lot of mistakes with the AR-15 that they can't make with a pre-charged gun. You know that because yeah. in field target, that's the name of the game. Yeah, it's very true. You know, you get away with a lot of things with the PCP that you don't with a spring. I actually have just started shooting more spring piston stuff this year because I've kind of gotten bored with the, just how easy the <laughs> PCP thing is. And that's not to say I'm cleaning courses because I'm not, no, but, I know. but you know, a lot of people like that's something we talk to new members and everything about all the time where it's, you know, these are folks that, that are just getting into it. And maybe they show up with a 20 foot pound springer. 20 foot pound springer is tough to shoot anything but pests with in my opinion yeah, like if you're using it for field target that is a tall ask for yeah. any gun um where it may be better to get you into a you know starter pcp i uh, would agree you know even a gauntlet avenger whatever you know you want to go with or something as expensive as a marauder you know into that 500 600 territory they're all great options and much easier to learn on yes. you know and, and yes there are some quirks and, and the extra cost of filling the gun is another consideration that these people have to make. But in my opinion, it's like bite the bullet and do it. Cause if you know you're gonna end up there, if you're not addicted to spring guns, then just like bite the bullet, buy a tank, buy a personal compressor, whatever, and get into PCPs now. And you can always upgrade the gun later. Well, that's my recommendation for the shooter. Uh, he doesn't have any problem spending $1,600 on an AR-15. Take that same $1,600 and buy a carbon fiber tank, a personal compressor and a nice pre-charged gun, he won't even spend $1,600. Yeah. So, but what about the guy that doesn't know how to shoot? He's got a longer 
row to hoe. Yeah, so to uh, He's personally, learn how to shoot. I think those people should start with the Springer gas piston gun because if you don't know how to shoot, that will teach you how to shoot and shoot anything. It will force you yeah. to learn how to shoot. Yes. Yeah, because that's where the follow through really comes in. I wouldn't go to the box store and buy the one you can afford for $159.95. I would spend time again and I would spend at the minimum, think about $250 to $350 and get something that's got quality. Get something that's got a nice trigger, or at least people say it has, <laughs> something that's decently accurate. And what's gonna happen with about, I don't know, 50% of these guys who are not shooters, they're gonna find out, yes, everybody says it's decently accurate, I can't get it to shoot. Right. They're gonna have to learn how to follow through, as you know. Yeah, it's certainly something you have to, you have to take your time with, yeah. as we all know. And it's more than just finding the right pellet it's more than, you know, figuring out the right hold. I mean, there's scope considerations, mounting them and making sure that they're lasting a long time. You know, the problem I have with, especially now, recommending a lot of spring piston or gas piston guns is the cost. The price ranges are so much different than they were when I got into it. Like, you used to be able to get a, a Diana 34 for 300 bucks or under 300 bucks right. in the case of the right. synthetic. And that was a great option. And now, you know, because of inflation and, you know, the kind of all the madness that the p pandemic's brought with shipping and all those things and costs going up everywhere, those guns are $400 plus. Right. You know, and if you're gonna spend that kind of money, you can get an R9 or, you know, something yeah. that's truly top of the line that'll last your lifetime. Yes, yes. And that's something they need to research. Yeah. Even though they don't know how to shoot, they do need to look into which guns are gonna last and be heirloom type guns and which guns are guys constantly selling yeah. so they can buy something else. Yeah. And we're only talking about rifles so far. That's a good point. We could talk about pistols too, um, but air pistols are so different than air rifles when you compare them to firearm pistols and rifles. Both firearm pistols and rifles shoot a very fast bullet. Obviously rifles faster, mm -hmm. but with uh, air pistols, uh, uh, four or five hundred feet per second might be all you're gonna get. Yeah. Uh, one of the ones I like is that uh, the one you put together on Pyramid Air. You can maybe build it. Oh, sure. I built the Godfather's gold gun out of it. Are you talking about the, the Adamant? Ad Adamant. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, AP-16, yeah. sure. Oh, isn't that cool? Great gun. Yeah. And, but, and you can pick the length of the barrel, yep. which gives you, well, because of the length of the tube underneath, it gives you the number of shots, right. it gives you the velocity. A lot of cool things you can do with that. But a high price point. I mean, it's a thousand dollar gun. Yeah, well, I wouldn't start on that if I were starting out shooting for the first time. I tell you where I would start. One gun. You heard it from the Godfather, folks. <laughs> the Beeman P-17. Oh, geez. My gosh, how can you go wrong? Uh, you might have to fix it yourself. If you have to fix it yourself, go to the Pyramid Air blog yep. and we describe how to take it apart and fix it. Right, right. But the beauty of that gun is it's got a decent trigger, it's decent accuracy. The only thing I would say is don't get one for your wife or your 13 year old daughter because it's a little hard to pump. Yeah. 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 So think that through. Now, what about CO2? We haven't talked about that. So this is one of the things that I think is actually really simple for folks at home. Like, if you have a gun you are looking to carry or that you use as a personal defense weapon in the home or outside of the home, yeah. it's simple. That's what you buy. You buy that replica and that's what you practice with, right? Like yeah. that's a super easy thing to do. It is. Um, and, and a lot of people, I don't want to say overlook the practicality of it, but they don't think about it. The, the dots don't necessarily connect. And that's actually one of the things we've seen you know, through the pandemic is a lot of people that are like, I want to get a replica of my carry gun because right. I can't afford ammo, I can't find ammo, I need to practice sure. so I can protect myself and potentially my family. And Tyler, it ain't just putting the pellet through the hole or making the hole with the pellet. It's getting the gun out of your holster when it's tucked under your jeans because sure. you're carrying concealed. Sure. I, I uh, am on the watchman team at church and I carry a P365 nine millimeter. And the most concern I have is how fast can I get that gun out? Because the guy in White Settlement who dropped the shooter after he killed somebody in church, uh, he had his gun out really quick. Yeah. 
but he teaches that. So I would say the replica air gun, if it is a true replica, and some of them are so fine, they are so spot on. Yep. They're gonna teach you not only just how to shoot pellets, but also, or BBs, but also how to get the gun out and how to put the gun away and how to be safe with the gun. Yep. It's actually, in my opinion, I like using a replica better than dry firing my, you know, carry pistol just because it's it gives you some kind of feedback right sure. um yeah sure the recoil is never going to be exactly the same as your nine millimeter or 380 but you know it's close enough for government work to make sure that you are you know maintaining a good solid grip so that you're keeping those sights on target and that you're finding your target past the sights you know and making sure everything's lined up right um and it, it, you can do so many things practicing with a co2 pistol in your garage or your basement uh even with bbs you know you can build yourself some little soft traps that uh you know are going to catch all of your bbs for pennies uh you just wrote about, about this yeah, yeah soft traps rubber mulch yeah. in a cardboard box yep oh my gosh for seven dollars, you got a trap that'll stop a 22 long rifle if it's 12 inches deep. And when you shoot up the front of the box, turn it sideways. <laughs> Start over. Cheap. Yep. Yep. And yep. it'll catch BBs, which so many traps won't do these days. Yeah, yeah. You don't have bounce backs you and don't ricochets want the and things like back. that. Steel traps are great, but those BBs do come back. Yeah, and even for the competition shooter out there, you know, if you're not carrying concealed and you are working from an outside the waist holster, you know that's great just to get reps in in the basement or the backyard wherever you're going to do it is fine yeah. um and and shoot you know even with like your uh, low ricochet no ricochet bbs your dust doubles and your smart shots you know you can buy some steel targets or use the steel targets you have and get that nice sound you know that ting 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 you don't know. forget to wear the glasses still. absolutely yeah absolutely because sometimes even the, even the dust devils a, a large piece could come back sure absolutely. i've never been hurt by one uh, but I don't want anybody to be hurt. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Well, I would say the last thing I would tell a new shooter to air guns is don't rush out and buy something just because you got $300 in your pocket. Spend some time on the internet and look around because not everybody who's saying things is necessarily saying true things. Mm -hmm. Find out who you can trust and who you can't trust and spend some time reading. And, and it, the more you do, the more, are you going to make the perfect choice? I never have, not first time, <laughs> but you're going to get closer. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. Do some research. You know, I think that's the easiest way to do it. Don't, you don't have to feel like the money's burning a hole in your pocket. Yeah. There are so many options out there. Uh, most of the guns are in, in reliable supply these days. Uh, where it's not a huge deal, you know, the ammo is going to be the harder part, even on the air gun side right now. Sure. You know, uh, and that's another consideration too. Is is you got to think about the caliber you're going to be using if you're doing small game stuff. If that's why you're buying an air gun for pest control. Can I say something? Buy right a 22. There? You just but raised go ahead. the issue. Okay, there are four small bore air gun calibers: 177, 20, 22, and 25. 177. Everybody's got them. Sure. Everybody. Yeah. 22, the next most popular. However, the next two, 20 and 25, used to be people were going to the 20. Well, these days, the choices in 20 caliber pellets are fewer yep. and fewer. But in 25, they're growing. Yep. And that's because of hunting and even long range shooting. So my recommendation, I'm not telling you what caliber to buy, but, but think about it before you buy, like yes. you just said. Yes, yeah. And don't buy a 177 to shoot small game at 80 yards. No. It's not realistic. No. You know, think about what you're doing. Read some blogs. Watch some videos that, of people that are actually doing it. See what they're using, you know, and, and you'll get a real quick idea of what you need. Thanks for joining Tom and I. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for more content. We've got five more parts coming here soon. So be on the lookout for part number two coming at you in the near future. And please, we appreciate it a ton. If you guys like, comment, and if you're not already, subscribe. Keeps us going here, keeps the channel growing, and gives us more opportunities to put out awesome content.